Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. We're gonna keep it short and sweet, but I do have some big news. Usually I will relay this message by the end of the day. I think this is important to get to it now. The time is now currently 4 p.m. almost in Ukraine. And without further ado, let's get into it. But I'd also like to mention that for my channel, I really thank you guys for hitting me 1K subs. And if you guys would like to leave a like in the video, it motivates me to keep this going. Anyways, let's look into it. Right now, I'm going to get into what we saw. If you have not seen my video yesterday, we are going to get into what happened with with the large announcement going on. Now, the new guy that is in charge, let me find his name for you right here. We had breaking news after my video yesterday of a Russian general in Ukraine's operation speaks out. This is the head of the operation, Sergei Surovikin, describing the situation as tense and has not ruled out that he might have to make very difficult decisions. He is talking about a absolutely Kyrgyzstan Oblast region right now, where it seems to be heavy large battling going on, which we've been noticing in the last couple of days. But not only that, it seems to be that in less than a week, we might actually see Ukrainians stepping forward and reaching Kyrgyzstan region. How do we know this to be true? In a late night address, Russian's Kyrgyzstan official Kirill Stremosov, Stremosov, sorry if I pronounced that correct, incorrectly, called i'm pretty sure i did calls for the people to evacuate the city as quickly as possible and says ukraine will begin an offensive on the city of kyrgyzstan very soon russia evacuating civilians from kyrgyzstan city not only are they evacuating civilians they are also evacuating everyone in this entire region right now what we have known or what we're estimating or guesstimating is that there's a large buildup, and this was actually stated by Sergey, that there's around maybe 30,000, maybe 60,000. Some reports are even estimating that there's 100,000 Ukrainian troops. Now, the Ukrainians are still not giving us that information because it is blackout warfare, which means that they're still pushing from this region, and they're pushing from this region, and now slowly they might be trying to get off and holding here. We've already seen that they've been on the road and I'll link a photograph so you guys can see what I mean, that they're only around 30 kilometers from the city of Kherson. What does that mean? Let's look over here for a second. This one was just updated, and thank you for whoever made this map. This was very nice. I, I didn't have to do this myself. But the Russian commander says that Nova Kakovka is disabled. That means that the entire bridge is ruined, either for retreat, and it's stating that impacts of HIMARS rockets have damaged Antonovka Bridge on the Dyke of Kokovka hydroelectric power plants in the traffic of currently stopped. Wow. Over here, I've taken notes that, that according that this report just came out 20 minutes ago from the Russian Ministry of Defense, that they have taken out 11 HIMARS um, high-speed uh, missiles along the way in the Kyrgyzstan region. So... Russia seems to be on the back foot again. They are on the defensive and they are taking out every wave of Ukrainians coming in. But we could see that this entire region all the way up to this uh, river right here that means that we could see this entire region right here starting to collapse to the Ukrainians, which means that in the next several hours, I gave it a week. It could be actually 48 hours that they will be on the lines of the Kyrgyzstan city. Let's move on for just one second. I think it's also really important to state, just like I did last time, that Bakhmut has been holding up, which is around 30,000 Ukrainian uh, troops strong. In this stronghold, they've been holding off Russian attack and artillery the entire time. Every time they've been trying to hit the city, and it seems to be the most intense that we've been listening to for the last 72 hours. But yet, they're still holding on, and Russia has not been able to make any foothold into the city of Bakhmut. Let's move on. There's another, um, there's another Ukrainian buildup in this region right here, and they're going to push east. That is of the Luhansk Oblast region. Now, something very interesting to uh, state is that it seems to me that they're going to try to make another push in Svatove. But this is not the interesting part. The interesting part is the interesting part is what the Kremlin's Peskov was asked if Russia's nukes will be used to protect the territories of the annexed Ukraine. What he stated was kind of interesting, that these annexed territories are now part of the Russian Federation and will get the same level of defense as the rest of the Russian territory. So, 
That could also be stated not just for Luhansk region. Let me zoom out just so you can see it. Not just for the Luhansk region, but also for the Kyrgyzstan region. If Ukraine keeps pushing up and keeps taking control of this area right here, right before they get to, um, to the city, they might be using more in-depth tactical nukes. I'm not saying that it's off the table. I still see that it's unlikely, but that is why that they're evacuating troops. And which goes also to show when Russian state television showed Sergei stating that he has to make undesired decisions. So we'll only see how that'll progress. The last thing I want to state is that all around the city, we're going to check right here. One thing I also forgot to mention is that Putin has just declared martial law in annexed regions of Ukraine and special response regime in, regi in regions of Russia next to Ukraine. That is uh, That includes all of the regions that we've been discussing that he is annexed right here. That just came out an hour ago. Seen reports that in the city of the capital of Kiev and all around from Chernihiv, Sumy, as well as the West, that we're starting to see a lot of drone attacks. And these drones are not going to be um, out of supply anytime soon. In accordance with Iran, they have signed another deal that they're going to start to send out even more drones to Russia. It's only around $20,000 for them to make a pop for these drones. The way the drones work is that they can't really control. So don't think that it can take out like a HIMAR MLRS system. They can only go one direction. They follow the location and can only move. And the only thing that the pilot can uh, retain is their altitude. Other than that, NATO is supplying more defense against drones, more systems in the next couple of days. And we will see that coming within one week to three weeks, like as I mentioned last time. That's all for my video. Keep an eye on what's happening in Kyrgyzstan region, and I'll keep updated with you guys. Take care, and don't forget to subscribe and like. I'll appreciate it greatly. Bye, guys.